Mr. Fred, there should be an acknowledgement here. I mean, as all of these companies this morning and financial firms are reassessing their relationships with the NRA, we need to remember that there was a massive failure here on the part of the FBI and the local police department. We have rules on the books. We need to follow those rules and, and those procedures. And yet, over the weekend, the Blackstone Group asked outside fund managers to detail their ownership in the companies that make or sell guns, according to the Wall Street uh, Journal. Companies like MetLife, Enterprise Holdings, United and Delta Airlines cut their ties entirely with the NRA. Your thoughts on this? Now, this is familiar, and it's kind of a tribute to how good liberal activists are at getting putting pressure on corporations. Anyone who's publicly traded who has to answer to their stockholders has to react to this kind of campaign. And you've seen it before. Uh, we saw it with Alec after the shooting of Trayvon Martin and all the corporate sponsors. They started to run. As soon as the heat came up, they booked it. But now if you look at some of the corporate sponsors and partners of Alec, a lot of them, they slink right back and they start to they start to go work again uh, with Alec, and they'll probably do the same thing with the NRA. There are five million extremely devoted members, and unlike a lot of constituencies in the right, gun owners for them it's a lot of them it's a lifestyle. And if you start to mess with them, if you're a company that says that you're not welcome here, I, sus I suspect we'll see a backlash from them. The, the president did his listening session. I thought it went very well. I was very impressed actually, and it was a good idea well, to hear from others. It was not only well done and important; it was so much better than that performance we saw down in Florida on CNN, which was the opposite of a constructive conversation. I think the president's a pragmatist on these issues. I think he Said cares about the Second Amendment and the NRA. He touts their support all the time, but he's not hardcore on guns. So maybe he's the type of guy who can broker something. And I would just point out, Maria, and to underscore your point, we have laws on the books already right. that are not being adhered to. And I think it might be it's, it's counterintuitive, but maybe we should enforce the laws that we already have. In Charleston, remember that horrible shooting in a church, the terrible church shooting in Texas as well, both of those killers, those mass killers, should have been denied guns based on background checks. But there were balls dropped by the government, and they were able to pass the background checks when they should not have been able to do so. Mm. Let's fix that. Mm. That seems like job number one, and there's this bipartisan bill, John Cornyn and Chris Murphy, designed to reform some of those issues. That's the one that I think has the best chance of passing. You know, you hate to connect the dots, really, uh, in terms of what the FBI has been doing, Christopher. I know you've done a lot of work on the, on the FISA memo and the FISA abuses, as well as the incredible amount of bias at the top of the FBI during the election. The president put out a tweet a couple of a week or so ago, basically saying they're spending so much time looking for collusion, and you're seeing all of these mistakes. You hate to connect dots like that specific, but there has been so much focus on this collusion that never materialized, uh, and yet we see these failures. And you'd, you'd think that the number one job of the FBI would be protecting American citizens right. from lunatics and from mass shootings. And the system here has failed. The public, public, public officials ask us to, if they see something, to say something. People repeatedly saying things. And there were also 39 phone calls between the police department and that home. He's been, he's had interactions with the police officers, I say, 23 times. Incredible. It should have come up. And it's not just in Texas, like you said, in Charleston. Also, Las Vegas, Orlando, San, Santa Bernardino, uh, Aurora, all these people passed background tests. And even the NRA, Wayne LaPierre at CPAC last week was saying that we don't need a wider net, we need a tighter net, something that can not allow these people to slip through and get guns that can kill people. It's great analysis.